Hey guys, welcome back to Sustainable Living and if this is your first time joining us, welcome to the channel. So what I'm going to be doing today is I want to take you through a overview of our house that we recently built roughly about three years ago and we're still working on projects here and there. But this project is one of those projects that has inspired us and led us to do the things that we wanted to do and that we are doing today. First of all, I want to give credit to my Heavenly Father for leading us through this process. I have to admit, by training I'm a social worker and I have very little building experience. So through his inspiration and the help of many others, we were able to complete this task. So first of all, I want to give credit to him. One of the first things we had to do was move our animal pen over so our animals had a place to have a shelter. This was a very crazy task, but we were able to get it done. One of the issues we were having is that we could no longer have our animals where we were currently living. The second person I want to give credit to is my friend Michael. He's the one that made it possible to do this project and showing me the steps that I needed to do to complete this task. Though my family did most of the work, he put us on the right steps to do what we needed to do on those learning curves that we did not know. So thank you, Michael, for all your countless hours of service. We ended up renting a trencher to trench out our electrical lines, water lines, and our sewer lines. I also ended up trenching out my footing lines in hope that it would help the backhoe operator in cutting my footings. I don't know if it did or not, or if it was just a greater headache to him. We did hire a plumber to come out and help us in making sure that all of our slopes were correct on our plumbing before we buried everything to get ready for the slab pour. I ended up making a little bridge so I could get the tractor in there and put some AB down to help with the compaction before we start putting our rebar in. Our footings are 24 inches by 24 inches with five continuous strands of 5 8 rebar with the slab tying down into those footings. Now some guys may be thinking that is a lot of concrete for that wall. You gotta remember my walls are gonna be 12 inches thick. There's gonna be a lot of earth block on top of that footing. Plus this is the code that we were following from New Mexico. Though Arizona does not have a code for this, we went ahead and followed a code that is established through New Mexico. We put the rebar at two foot on center. One of the beautiful things about this material is I used all of the dirt from my footings and also from the dirt from my backyard to make my block. I wanted to do a monolithic pour, but after talking to one of the guys that was gonna help me finish the concrete, he was afraid that we'd lose a few workers in those big footings, so I agreed to go ahead and pour the footings first. Though we would have a cold joint, we figured it wouldn't be that big of a deal in the strength of the structure. After the pour of the footings, we did have to check all of our forms to make sure they were still level. We did hire some guys to come and help us with the finishing of the concrete, which was a very good blessing that we did that. The concrete was obviously one of the more costly expenses of this build, but we're glad we did it the way we did. We had to sift the dirt down in order for the dirt to be made into block. You could not have big aggregate in the material or the blocks would not hold together. We put all these blocks together and let them cure for a day or two before we started our first course. This is the hopper where we would put the mixed dirt where it would compress the blocks. This dirt was donated by a local sand and gravel company for us to try but what we found was the natural dirt was the best. The way that we figured out that this dirt wasn't any good is that we would take the compressed blocks and soak them in water. If they deteriorated, then they weren't any good. This block was from the material that we used from our property. With the right moisture content, we would mix 10% Portland with the dirt and till it with the tractor, and this is what made the block. So we're starting our first course. This is where my friend really lined us out and showed us what we needed to do to get our first course lined out properly. And then from there, we just followed a simple pattern of keeping our walls straight and following our string lines. So over the next few minutes, you'll be seeing videos 
of us laying block or where the progression of the block is at in our walls. I have to let you know that it, ta it would take us one complete day to make our block and then the next day we would lay the block in about three to four hours. The day that we would make block we would fill roughly 12 pallets of block which would pretty much cover the whole interior of the house with pallets. Now one course complete round around the whole house would take all of those blocks so each day of work we could only do one course after laying that course the next day we would then be back to lit, making block again so roughly one course of block would take two days to complete so here's a breakdown of the blocks there are 23 courses to the top of the house each course had roughly 450 blocks per course for a grand total of 10,350 blocks what we made for our house. All that water that you saw we were constantly having rainstorms and flooding our house. We had a swimming pool many times in our house. The water did not hurt the block it just actually helped the block cure better so there was no problem with the rain. It actually made it more enjoyable. I want to talk with you about laying the block. This is one of the things that sold me about this product. So we would take the material that we would make the block with, then we would sift that down through a wire screen that was much finer, and we'd get a very fine dirt. And then we would mix that fine dirt with water to almost to the consistency of pancake batter. And at this point, we would then set the block according to our string, and the moisture would then suck between the two, the bottom block and the top block because it is a clay mixture the two would marry together quite quickly after about 30 seconds of setting you could not move the block without some type of hammer or a real hard hit with your fist so it's quite a secure way of putting the block in also New Mexico says you can do a dry stack but we went ahead and decided to do a wet fit and that's why you see all the mud lines because that is the mud that's dripping down from the blocks when we set the blocks. You can see in the photos that we have our windows framed out, our doors framed out, and we put plywood around those edges to keep those boards um, square. Now we did uh, paint some pressure treated chemicals on that to keep those boards from rotting. To secure the frames of the window frames and door jams, we would just shoot nails through the wood into the block. The block was dense enough that we could stand a nail shot into it. What we're going to be doing is we're going to leave a keyway over the doors and over the windows for a bond beam that we're going to be pouring to lock all these blocks together. As we got higher up on the wall, it became much slower due to us being at a higher level to lay the block. So it required lots of hands of my kids passing blocks to me and running them to me, which I'm very grateful for their help. I need to make a note here that this whole process of making these walls out of adobe block took us approximately three to four months of hard labor every day. I ended up drilling some holes on top of the blocks to put some rebar in and it's not for any structural reason that was just to elevate my rebar that I was going to put in my bomb beam. That's why you see all the rebar barbs sticking up. In the next few slides what you'll be seeing is us framing up the bond beam or forming up the bond beam. My friend came up with this idea of using the plywood and he came up with an ingenious idea of how to secure that plywood. Basically what he did was we cut small sections of rebar that would go the width of the block and then we would run tie wire through the form and then suck that tight in order to hold the bond beam or the form tightly together so the concrete would not blow out. We would secure the forms to the block by shooting nails through the block 
and then when the concrete had cured we just take a nail pry bar and pry the pieces off after cutting the tie wire that was through the concrete. In these next few photos you'll see, look closely on the forms and you'll see little pieces of rebar that we used to hold that tie wire that went through the form. We will cut those off to help bring down the forms. This is the morning after the pour. We ended up renting a pump truck to pump the concrete up into that form and we had a tractor that I sat in the bucket and manned that heavy hose. That's how we got the concrete that high. What you just saw were anchor boat bolts that we did secure into the bond beam in which we will secure a seal plate that we would attach our trusses to and then it was traditional framing from there. We had a group of men from our church come over and donated their time to help me set my trusses. I wasn't planning on this, but my grandfather made a call, unbeknownst to me, and organized this, which I am very grateful for. In a matter of two hours, we had set all these trusses, what would have taken me and another man probably all day and part of another day, and it worked out really well. So special thanks to any of them if they watch this video. Thank you. You can see on these gabled ends, we went ahead and put plywood on those and went ahead and wrapped those. That was another idea from my friend, which saved us a lot of headache trying to sheet those when they were hung. So it worked out well with that little tip. That was a great tip. Now after the trusses got hung, there was some debate whether we should go ahead and start sheeting it. We ended up going ahead and started to sheet the roof in order to secure it so that the uh, trusses wouldn't rack. We get a lot of high winds where I live and I'm glad we went ahead and started putting some sheeting on it to ensure that they were secure. From this point in the slideshow, the progress of the building will go a little bit faster as we did not take as many pictures going through this. We did get the roof sheeted and put some plastic wrap on top and we did put a metal roof on the house, which we did hire to have put on. We put a mud-based stucco to cover the block to help keep it protected. Coming in this spring, we will be putting stucco on the house. Getting into the cooler months, we went ahead and put our wood stove in and that was a great help to allow us, once we got dried in, to start working on drywall, electrical, and finishing our plumbing inside the house. It was regular framing in the house. We anchored the walls to the floor with anchor bolts and uh, just regular traditional framing as you can see. As you can see by the photos, we have one large great room and then the bedrooms are off to the side. That's what we wanted. We wanted our kitchen to be included into the great room so when we have family gatherings and company over that we would not be excluding anybody, that everything would be in one unit and we find it very enjoyable. I need to give a special thanks to my grandfather. He uh, gave me the pointers on how to do the electrical work and we were able to wire our house completely on our own and uh, not have to pay an electrician. And actually we found that the wiring process was very enjoyable. In fact, my wife says that was her favorite part of the house build. We ran PEX through the whole house for our water lines and we did hire a plumber and paid him a day's wage to come out and hook up our tubs and put our vents in and make sure all of our PEX fittings were put in correctly. The plumber advised us that we have all of our vents go to one vent hole to eliminate multiple punctures through our roof. We followed his advice and he ran all of our vents at one hole. So we had to go with a little bit larger vent pipe but we only have one hole going through our roof. When we put our stove pipe in, I didn't include any photos, but we did put hardy backer material all around the interior of that box that we did for the pipe coming through the roof to, to secure 
that we would not have any fire issues. We ended up putting can lights throughout the house, which we now enjoy. When we started this build, I had no clue on how much work this would require. Once we got to the dried in phase, I thought we had accomplished so much, which we had, but I had no clue how much more work was ahead of us when we started the drywall and that whole process. There was a lot of work that we still had to put in. This phase in the build seemed like it just drug on forever. Thankfully, my mother, ironically, had experience with doing drywall, so she was able to give me some tips and tricks on taping my joints. I ended up coming up and just doing my own skip trial method, and because my pattern was the one I wanted to go with, I ended up having to do all the skip trials so it all stayed uniform throughout the whole house. This was definitely a family project. It engaged everyone, even the kids that may not have been able to help much. They still had to play in the dirt and the grime, and uh, it definitely made a great family experience and a bonding experience, and also some headaches at times. The kids stayed entertained in a room that we weren't working on by watching television and just staying out of the way so they wouldn't get hurt. After getting the drywall where we wanted it, we ended up having to tape all the walls off on the floor so we could get ready to spray paint the interior of the house. In the building process we learned to repurpose a lot of things. Those fans that you saw in those previous pictures were ones that we found on Craigslist that were practically brand new that we got for less than 25 bucks a piece, which was a great deal. So the earth walls, we went ahead and put a mud plaster and did multiple layers until it got to a fairly smooth consistency, what we wanted. And then we ended up sealing the walls with linseed oil, which gave us a dark brown look, which we liked. We ended up putting an attic access where we had extra storage up in our attic and put uh, some storage shelves up there, which has been a great blessing also. Just a quick shot of some shelving that I made in each one of the bedrooms. I really can't give enough credit to my kids and my wife on being patient with me through the ups and downs of this build. Building your own house can be very exciting but also very stressful. So much kudos to my kids and the patience that they gave to us. In the middle of our build, we were still caring for our animals and had pregnant animals that were giving birth and little baby goats to care for, which we enjoyed. Due to our house selling in town, we had to move in early. We didn't document our process of staining our concrete floors, but you can see that our floors are a dark brown. We ended up sanding them and staining them and then sealing them before we moved in. We didn't have a working shower or tub or anything like that. That night, I ended up having to set a toilet so we at least have a place to go to the bathroom. Over the next few months, we would spend the time finishing off the things inside the house to make our home more livable. One of the things that we used for hot water was that we took a 500 foot long drip line irrigation hose and ran it on the outside fence back and forth and then ran it through the window so we had solar water heat until we could actually get our tankless water heater installed. We went down to a tile company down in a large metropolitan area and picked up some discount tile. And like everything else, this is a first time for everything. We put hardy board on the concrete walls, sealed it, and started laying tile, which we felt that it turned out to be pretty good for a first timer. I learned a lesson about accent tile. We spent just as much money for all of our large tiles as we did for just our accent tile crazy. Once this shower was completed, we can now shower at our own house and stop using my parents' place to bathe and get ready for work and for our daily activities. It made it much more nice and felt more like at home as we started getting more of these amenities. I went to a local lumber company and got some rough cut lumber to finish off my gabled ends and we really liked the way that this turned out. The gentleman that drew up our house plans also works for the high school wood shop and we were able to get him and his class to build us a front door with the nice details. 
we decided to put in a walk-in shower in our bathroom and my poor wife so patiently waiting upon me we got it done we ended up getting a really good deal on some repurposed cabinets and that's what we decided to do we also found a company online zcrete concrete solutions and we ended up pouring our own concrete countertops which we are very pleased with we ended up staining them we didn't want to go with the plain gray and uh, we thought having some accent green color would help offset the brown color in our house prior to us moving in we ended up putting in our own septic system. The winter this year was very mild, which made it very doable to put our septic system in. I want to apologize for the photos. They came out really blurry. I'm not for sure what went on when we were taking these photos, but uh, during the process of covering it up and also digging the leech lines, the kids had a kick. Uh, by me letting them dig with the backhoe with me and at the time of these photos I didn't realize that the kids were playing in the leech lines and photos were being taken but once I realized they were in the leech lines I explained to them that they needed to get out for the leech lines could cave in on them and it would be a disaster situation. The laser level that you saw in the previous photos paid off to be a great investment in making sure that my junction box and my three leech lines were all at the same level. As the slideshow winds down, I hope you enjoyed this process of the build. I will take you on a three to five minute video tour at the end of this slideshow, so please stay tuned. One of my biggest regrets that I have is that I didn't film any of my process of building so that's why we went with the slideshow here is a quick tour of our house this is the motto that we want to always remember where we've been and remember the great blessings that have been in our life so you can see that there's still much work for us to be doing we have trim around our front door to do but here's our living room it is just a I'll stand here by the front door and I'll do a big panoramic to show what we've got going on it's just a very large great room that we have we still have work on the island to do I'm going to do some uh, shiplap this summer and also the backsplash on the kitchen. I need to get that done. So this room roughly is almost a thousand square feet, right around maybe 1100 square feet. <laughs> it is definitely the biggest section of our house, but that's what we wanted. This door goes into my boys' room, but their room is really dirty, so I'm not going in there. I may end up putting a light above their door, so it's not so dark in this corner. Here's all of our repurposed countertops, excuse me, repurposed cabinets that uh, I showed you in the slideshow. Our stove, we're planning on getting a flat top. That's why we have this high, ba this high back stove that we just are temporarily using until we get a uh, flat stove. Our table, our wood stove. This is our primary source of heat. Everything has worked out really well. We've not had any issues. Wood box. Here is the girls' room. Quick access. I showed you the slideshow. Here is our tankless water heater. We love 
our tankless water heater. This bathroom is still in the process of getting finished. We will put a, a large counter top in here and some probably a small cabinetry right this is the uh, bathroom that we all used that we finished first or I should say finished the shower first and uh, we used it for sharing it with eight people but One bathroom is better than none. I'll show you our bathroom. All right, this is our shower. We still need to get a cabinet above the toilet that we tiled from roof to floor. And then we did a cobbled type of a Floor, which we really liked. And then there's our shower. This floor is so Got a little plant in here, spider plant. And uh, yeah, this is our shower. We really like it. Works out good. So thank you for joining us. Just a quick tour of our house and Thank you for taking the time to watch our slideshow of the build of our house. It's been quite a journey for our family, but it has enabled us to free up our time and to start a YouTube channel and share these things with you folks. Uh, and it is completely debt free. That's why our projects are ongoing, is because we have chosen the path to live a debt-free life and so in order to do that we learn to repurpose things until we have the monetary means to get our house upgraded the way we want it please remember to like and subscribe and give us a big thumbs up if you really enjoyed this and uh, please give me a comment below too i'd really appreciate your feedback on what you thought of our video appreciate it thanks guys